modern world, great leaders resolve their conflicts with words. Alright, hello everyone, it's GSTAR321 here again, and today, as you can see, I'm playing something completely different. This is called Command & Conquer Generals, and basically, if you don't know much about the Command & Conquer series, they're real-time strategy games that focus on building a base, building units, such as infantry, vehicles, tanks, aircraft, and so on, and micromanaging all those units, then taking them to your enemy's base, and destroying it. They're great fun to play, and I've been playing Command & Conquer games ever since I played the very first one, which came out back in 1995. That's a long time ago. I haven't played all the Command & Conquer games, but I've played enough to really appreciate this series. The ones I've played are Command & Conquer, the very first one. I've played Command & Conquer Red Alert, I've played Red Alert 2 and its expansion, Yuri's Revenge. I've played Red Alert 3. And of course I've played this one here, Command & Conquer Generals. This one is... Command & Conquer Generals is a more sort of serious Command & Conquer game. If you've played any of the Red Alert games from the Red Alert series, you'll know that they're more of a funny take on the franchise. They're a bit goofy. For example, I remember in Red Alert 2, you could either play as the Allies or the Soviets, and if you picked the Soviets, you could actually build a unit, and this is no joke, you could build a giant squid. <laughs> it was awesome because it would patrol the waters and any allied ships that would come near it, you'd just see this giant squid pop up, wrap its tentacles around the ship, drag it under the water and destroy it. It was great! And the allies had dolphins with sonar or some bullshit, I can't remember. It's been a while since I played that one, but yeah, the Red Alert series is more of a goofy take on the franchise, whereas this one here, Generals, is a bit more serious and the real deal. If you're to ask me which one's my favourite out of all of them, I don't know, it's hard to say because they've all been memorable in their own right, but... Okay, look, I'm gonna say it. I'm gonna say that Red Alert 2 is my favourite. I just remember having so much damn fun playing that game back in the day, especially skirmish mode. It was out of control the amount of time I spent playing that game. But today I'm playing Generals and it's interesting because only recently I started playing this one. I never played it when it came out back in the day. This one, Generals came out back in 2003 by the way. I didn't get it back then and only in the past month or two I sort of wanted to play another Command & Conquer game, a different one, not one that I've already played before. And I was just doing some research and I heard lots and lots of good things about this game. It got plenty of positive reviews, it was very well received, so I thought, you know what, I'll give it a shot. And holy hell, I was not disappointed. This game is absolutely fantastic, it is a blast to play. It's pretty much a classic. I would call this game a classic. Look, if you pick it up nowadays though, the graphics may be... A little hard to take, especially if you've played more recent real-time strategy games like, I don't know, Company of Heroes, I guess. The graphics on this aren't that great compared to that, you know, newer real-time strategy games such as Company of Heroes. But the thing is with this game, it draws you in in terms of its atmosphere. It's absolutely brilliant. Basically, you can play as one of three factions, USA, China, or the GLA. GLA stands for the Global Liberation Army. They're basically a fictional terrorist organization. So you can play as any one of those factions and it's just the atmosphere for each faction is perfect. The music is brilliant. 
each faction has their own unique battle music. For example, if you pick the Chinese, they've got that traditional Chinese music playing, which is really cool. The USA has that real patriotic type music. And if you play as the GLA, they've got this really cool, funky, I don't know how you describe it, Arabian battle music, I guess. It's just awesome. And each faction is really well balanced and they play differently. They have their own strengths, their own weaknesses. For example, the USA's strength lies in their technology. They're the most technologically advanced out of the three factions and they have superior aircraft. The Chinese rely on strength in numbers because it's quite cheap to build units with the Chinese so you can just pump them out like there's no tomorrow. And the Chinese also have the best tank in the game which is cool. And the GLA they rely on more guerrilla tactics. They can build stuff like tunnel networks and suicide bombers and things like that. So each faction plays differently. Each faction has their own strategy. Each faction has their own strengths and weaknesses. Each faction is perfectly balanced and each faction is so much damn fun to play. This game is brilliant. I am really looking forward to playing through this game. Basically with these walkthrough videos what I'm going to be doing is playing each of the campaign missions for each of the three factions. There are seven missions per faction, so there will be 21 videos in total, including this one, so 22. And I'm going to be playing it on the hardest difficulty, Brutal. I can easily blitz through Brutal in this game, no problem, because I have been playing it almost non-stop the past couple of months. I just love it. You know, I've replayed certain missions dozens and dozens of times because it's just so addictive I can't stop it's just <laughs> it's so much fun you know and I just really like to see if I can best myself for example win in less time or win with less casualties and so on alright so but this video guys it's basically just gonna be an intro and I'm gonna go through the training mission there is quite a bit to explain in terms of how to play this game. I don't want to leave anything out. I want to be as detailed as possible. But if you're already a pro at this game, then you can just go ahead and skip straight to the brutal mission walkthrough videos. But for this video, it's just going to be for people that have never played this game before, let alone a command and conquer game. Alright, and... Actually, before I get into it, I should mention that there is an expansion for this called Man and Conquer General Zero Hour. It came out in the same year, 2003. It basically added more missions, different units for each faction, etc. A sequel, Man and Conquer Generals 2, was in development, but they canned it. They didn't release it. It sort of got cancelled, I believe, during the either alpha or beta stage because they were getting too much negative feedback from people during those stages which is a bit of a shame because I've watched some videos of it and it looks really really good graphics have been enhanced dramatically um, maybe in the future we'll see a sequel but for now this and the expansion zero hour are all we've got and there's probably some mods as well for it that I'm not aware of one more thing I want to mention is that this game out of like, the thing is with this one, unlike most Command & Conquer games I've played, there's no battles on the sea. They primarily take place on land and in the air as well. So you can't build a naval yard, for example, or any naval units like ships, submarines, <laughs> giant squids, and so on. You might think that's a bad thing, but man, trust me, it's not. This game is fucking awesome. Enough talk, I've spoken too much already. Let's get straight into it, guys. Command and Conquer Generals. We'll go solo, and of course, like I said, I'll be doing the training mission here. Let's do it. And of course, we will go brutal, the hardest difficulty.
General, the world's largest and most organized terrorist group, known as the Global Liberation Army, has taken control of a chemical weapons plant in the Mazar DMZ. A small ranger strike team has been sent to destroy the factory. You have been chosen for the command. Alright, so here we go, we're in control, we can move around on the battlefield, this is what it looks like, it's sort of like a top-down view, on the ground. mission objective, liberate the USA base. Okay, left click on units to select them, selected units can be given commands. With the unit selected you can left click on the ground to give them a move command, left click on enemy soldiers to order your selected unit to attack. So it's going to give us real basic instructions here. This is just a really simple tutorial or training mission, whatever you want to call it. But there are a lot of key things that this tutorial doesn't mention, which I will because you really need to know this stuff in order to beat the game, especially on the harder difficulties like hard and brutal. So we need to liberate the USA base, which is here. It's been overrun by the GLA. The GLA in the game are represented by the green units. The USA are represented by the blue units. And China is represented by red units. So for the tutorial mission here, we're playing as the USA. So let's go ahead and liberate this base. There's a few GLA enemies here. First of all, Left click and hold the mouse button to drag and select all your units. These guys are USA Rangers. Left click anywhere on the battlefield to make the move to that location. So let's left click. Let's blow up this barrel. That should destroy everyone. I have a feeling they're going to start running. Yeah, I knew that would happen. That's fine. Let's just kill these rebels. On the way, beta. ETA They're the basic infantry of the GLA, the Rebels, ranges the basic infantry of the USA. And for the Chinese, it's the Red Guards. Search and destroy. And we have some new reinforcements here. These vehicles are called the Humvees. They're very good against enemy infantry. However, they have extremely poor armor. They will get chewed up by an enemy tank in no time. Or even if they're just overwhelmed by a sheer Special amount of enemy here. infantry, they'll go down. They're very weak. How about a lift? However, they are quite fast, so you can use them as sort of like Got recon vehicles. Let's now, I'm going to select them all here. here. This is very important, and it doesn't mention this when you play through this tutorial. It doesn't really mention any of the keyboard commands, keyboard controls, which is unfortunate because it's practically essential in terms of playing this game. Um, if I just left click to the right here, watch what happens. Whoa! See how the Humvees just speed ahead? And they leave your rangers running behind really slowly. That's a problem in battle. Because say for example the enemy base is here and they've got defenses set up. And you want to move all these units into the base. Obviously you're going to left click. Like say the enemy base defense is here. Oh, Bang, yeah. left click. The problem is these Humvees are going to go in. You won't have these guys until a bit later. See, look, they're still running, 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 running. Too late, bang. By that time, at least two or three of your 
Humvees will have been destroyed, and by the time the Rangers come in, you know, it's too late. So, what you can do is, to make them all move at the exact same speed, select them all and press Control F on the keyboard. Let's go for that it. puts them in what's called a formation, and they will all move at the speed... Like, all the units will move at the speed of the slowest unit in that selection, in this group here. So, the Rangers. Alright, very, very important. Oh, yeah. Now they can all go into that base in unison and attack at once. Whoa! So that's how you put your units in formation. Select them all and then control F. Now you can also group units together. So say if you're somewhere on the battlefield like up here and you just want to quickly go to your grouped units. So say you want to assign these units to a group, you don't want to have to keep doing this, you know, dragging the mouse constantly every time you want to select them. You can press control and a number. So let's press control one. See how they've got the one there? They now belong to group one. So if I right click to deselect them and press one on the keyboard, bang, there you go. They're all selected already. I don't have to keep doing this all the time. And if you're somewhere off in the battlefield, like over here for example, and you want to quickly jump to them, press 1 rapidly twice. And there you go, it jumps straight to them. If you press 1 on the keyboard once, then it will select them, but you won't jump to them. So double tap 1 and that will jump straight to them. Good, so we've got them in formation indicated by the F and they're in group 1. You can group them like control 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0. So what's that? 10 groups. Cool. I only use about 3 to 4 on average. Oh yeah! So let's go ahead and liberate this USA base from the GLA. We've got some enemy GLA enemy vehicles here. Technicals. I guess they're equivalent of the USA Humvees. Just weak, but they're pretty good against infantry. They're quite fast as well. So look, see? The Humvees basically take care of the infantry pretty good. Choose them up. You can put your infantry in Humvees. You can load up to one, two, three, four, five units. There's five slots here to put your infantry in them. I don't really like doing that. Break it loose. But you know, if for example, if you want to put um uh what are they called? I think they're called missile defenders for the USA. Basically, RPG troopers are what you're gonna to want to put into the Humvees because they'll be able to fire their RPGs out of the window, use their missile attack. Pretty cool. Okay, you've liberated a USA barracks. Buildings like this allow you to train new units. The barracks trains soldiers. Left click on your new barracks to see what soldiers you can train. Left click on a unit in the barracks to spend the supplies to create the unit. Beta team, keep moving. We need yep. to liberate oh, yeah. the rest of our base. So, let's just go ahead and do that now while the game's mentioned it. If you left click on your barracks, this is basically where you build infantry as the USA. So once I left click on it, see, you can build some rangers. So if I left click on a ranger, it starts building him. You can put up to nine in the build queue here. What's the mission, and sir? now we've got eight. So you can't build more than nine sort of units, any given units at a time. So you have to wait for one What's to be mission, built sir? and then a free slot opens up. Bang, you can start building another one. They cost $225, and as you can see, it says they're strong against infantry, weak versus light vehicles. Yeah, so they're pretty much only good against What's infantry. Mission, so they're just building at the moment. I'll talk about that later. What's the mission, sir? Basically, when you click on one of your units, Special it comes here. up with an area down What's here mission, which contains the special abilities that that unit can utilize. 
So for the American Rangers, they have the ability to capture enemy buildings. As you can see, it's here. Capture targeted enemy building. What's the mission, sir? But you have to enable that here at the barracks by clicking on the barracks and then clicking the capture building feature. Then the mission, your rangers will be able to capture enemy buildings. If you click on the Humvee, these five slots are for What's the mission, sir? infantry that you can put in. So Need look, I'll show man? you. Put two in this Humvee. How about a lift? See, comes up with two pictures of the rangers there, indicating that there are two What's the mission, inside sir? the Humvee. I'll talk about all this stuff later. The game's actually going to mention that. Okay, so we need to put all these units into group one. So let's press control one again and put them all in formation. Control F, there you go. Looks like a good run. Now, Whoa! another very, very handy feature is the attack move ability, which is here attack move, order unit to move to the target area Upgrade and stop complete. to engage enemies on the way. So if you just left click, see how the cursor there is green? Cross here. Oh, yeah. They're just going to move there. They won't fire on their way. Actually, most of the Let's time they do. It. But if you want a foolproof way of them to move, say here, and fire on enemies at the same time, use the attack move feature and watch. Once they kill all these enemies, they will then move to this location. There you go, see? So they're all moving there. You have liberated a USA cold fusion reactor. Reactors are used by American and Chinese forces to power their base. Your power bar indicates how much power your base has. If your base runs low on power, base defenses may go offline and your radar will go out. Very, very important. Okay, Christ, I went too far. You have liberated a USA supply center. Supply centers collect supplies, providing you with the resources to build new buildings and units. Each supply center automatically generates a single Chinook helicopter that will gather supplies for you. Okay, so there's the supply center and that is the cold fusion reactor. Power is very important for the... Oh, this is cool as well. Look out. See Special if enemies... Oh, sorry, if your Army's units elite. are hurt, they'll move much slower. I like that. Very realistic. Rally point confirmed. <laughs> Very cool. Starts limping. Um, yeah, so with the Chinese and the Americans, USA, you have to build these reactors to power your base. Mainly for, for base defenses. Without power, your base defenses will not work. And certain other buildings won't work as well. The GLA is pretty cool in that they don't even need to build reactors to power their base. They simply just don't need them. It's awesome. And to gather money so that you can build, for example, more ranges, more units, you have to build what's known as a supply center here. We've just liberated one. And basically, each time you build one, you'll get this Chinook helicopter that comes with it, and it will automatically start gathering supplies from the nearest supply location, the supply pile. So this is what supply piles look like. This is basically how to collect money in the game to build units. And it will tell you how much is remaining in each supply pile. 1,950, 3,750, so we got plenty. You can, oh, we can't do it here because it's just the training mission, but you can build some more Chinooks as well as you're playing through the missions to speed up the money collection process. Okay, let's press 1. How about a lift? Select all my units and move towards these tanks. Oh, yeah. Let's get some tanks. Awesome. These are basically the staples of the USA's tanks, the Crusaders. They're pretty good. Um, there is a better tank and they're called the Paladin tanks, but I'll talk about that a bit later. Let's just group them all to unit one and formation. There we go. Okay. Let's, go Let's liberate it. this USA command center now. You've liberated a USA command center. Here you can use many of your special abilities. 
To choose technologies and special weapons, click on the flashing general button. So, the Bring flashing on. general button is over here. General's experience menu. Show the experience menu where you can spend experience points gained in battle for various generals. Fuck you, game. <sighs> okay. You've liberated a USA construction dozer that was just down here. Left click on your new construction dozer to see what buildings it can create. Select the war factory and choose a location for it to be built. Once done creating the war factory, the dozer will be available for other construction projects. So that there is the construction Quite dozer. Yeah. Basically, this thing will build your buildings for you, like the supply stash, cold fusion reactors, barracks, and so on. Sounds we have to good. build a war factory, so I might as well just do that now. Actually, no. I'll do that in a minute. First, I want to talk about this. So if you click on it, it will bring up this menu. As you can see, I have one point. I'm on level one. You can go up to level five, as you can see here, rank required, five star general. I'm only level one general at the moment, one star general. Basically, as you play through the game, as you kill enemy units, you will gain experience. Each time this goes up, you'll gain a level. Like for example, go to level two, You'll get more points to use, ideally, and you can select sort of these uh, generals' powers, generals' abilities. They're unique to each faction, so of course, you know, this Paladin tank won't be available for the Chinese or the GLA. They all have their own unique powers they can use. This is the only one we can do at the moment, build this Paladin tank. All the others aren't even here. This is just the training mission, so what do you expect? Um, I'll talk about the Paladin the tank story? after I've built this War Factory. The War Factory cost is $2,000 and it builds all USA ground vehicles. Let's build it. Now, if you hold the left mouse button and then move the mouse around, you can select which direction you want to place it. Good area. So I always like placing it in an ideal direction. And if you want to set the rally point, so say for example you build the tank and you want it to come out at a certain area, like here, just left click on the building and then left click, bang, anywhere All on the ground. Finished. And there we go, we've built Good our job. war factory. The base is liberated. Now let's build a strong battle force. When your forces are ready, General, proceed to this GLA mountain hideout and destroy their secret bio lab. So that's our objective, we need to destroy the GLA's bio lab. What are all these units doing? They're all over the place. Look, there's some up here, here. It's a mess. Your new war factory can be used to build vehicles like Crusader tanks. Left click on a Crusader tank to order it to be built. You can left click multiple times to order multiple tanks to be constructed. So, oops, I don't want to select anything. If we... Oh my god, so much text. You have liberated an entire USA base and are now ready to carry the fight to the enemy. Each mission has mission objectives that you must follow in order to win the mission and to progress in your war against your enemies. Follow the mission objective to win the mission. So if you want to find out what your mission objectives are, you can go down here and click on mission briefings, this speech bubble here, and it will pop up. Wow, that's a lot of text. Yeah, okay. This is just the training mission, so it's got a ridiculous amount of text, but normally it'll just be like a few lines, you know, pretty much like up to here. As you're playing through the main missions in the game, it'll just say, do this, do that, and so on. How Let me get all my units together over here. So what did it say? Build a Crusader tank. Okay, let's do that. There's the Crusader tank. It costs $900 to build. Strong versus vehicles and buildings, but weak against aircraft and missile armed infantry. So tanks are good against enemy vehicles and enemy buildings. They're absolutely garbage against infantry. Now this is a sort of annoying thing in this Command & Conquer USA game. Basically, 
Look, I think you can crush enemy infantry with tanks, but it's not like in the older Command & Conquer games. Basically, from memory in the older ones, you could hold ALT and left click, and that would... Like, say the enemy infantry was here, you could hold ALT and left click on him like that, and the tank would run it over. Run that enemy infantry over here. Proceeding to target zone. <laughs> Holding ALT just basically sets waypoints, so if I hold ALT left Anywhere click here, say, here, here, then here, then here, you'll notice that the tank will first go there, then it will go there, 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 and there. So, I'm not sure if you can really run over infantry in this game. It can be done, but it's more sort of unintentional. But, it's sort of a good thing as well, because you need to use a bit more strategy in terms of how you play you know you can't just simply build an army of tanks and then go into an enemy base and destroy it because if the enemy has like say Need a point, for example all of these are enemy RPG troopers if you go into a base full of them your tanks will get absolutely wrecked Search and destroy. so you need to build different units as Rally opposed to just confirm. an army of tanks to win each mission which is good I like that Alright, so back to the general's powers. I've got one point, and we can choose, because I'm the one star general at the moment, I can choose this Paladin tank. If I go to the war factory, oh, what's going on? Go away. If I select the war factory, of course we can also build the Humvees. As you can see, they're strong versus infantry, weak versus tanks. I don't really like the Humvees. But over here is the Paladin tank. I can't select it yet because you need to unlock it, as you can see it says requires General's Promotion. So certain units, you'll only be able to build them if you unlock them from the General's Promotion menu here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the Paladin tank. Look at it, Paladins can shoot down enemy missiles with an advanced defensive laser system. Selected, now I have zero points left. Done. Go back to the war factory, and look, I can now build the leaden tanks. Strong versus tanks, buildings, standard. But the thing that really sets the Paladin tanks apart from your basic Crusader tanks is the fact that they have this laser, which... Look at it. Looks so cool. Doing what's right. Doing what's right. <laughs> I love some of the things. Polished and your ready. units say when you select them. It's more funny for like the GLA and the Chinese, but the USA have some pretty funny things they say too. Yeah, clean. so the thing that sets apart the Paladin tank from your standard Crusader tank is... Polished and ready. I mean, the Paladin tanks are still great at destroying enemy vehicles and buildings, but they also have this laser. Say for example, forces here. this Ranger here that I've selected was an enemy RPG trooper and it was firing RPGs at your Paladin tank. Paladin tank the Paladin the tank would basically shoot out this red laser pew, like as soon as the RPG comes flying at it pew, it'd just destroy it instantly. So you can't really hurt these tanks, they're just fantastic. I mean you can but missile sort of um, enemy units don't do shit to it like RPG troopers stinger sights and so on. Of course they'll get chewed up by enemy tanks and aircraft or, or whatever but they're really good against enemies that have missiles whereas Crusader your standard body. Crusader tanks will get totally wrecked by enemy units Armored that use missile reporting. sort of weapons, RPGs and so on. Okay let's build a few of these Paladin tanks I think this is all we really need anyway to go ahead and destroy the enemy's base. As you can see in the bottom left corner here, this is our radar. You can jump to any position on the map by right clicking or left clicking. But I like to just right click because say for example, I've got a unit selected. If I click here on the map, it'll go there. So I prefer to just right click. So let's have a look at this base. There it is. We've got a few units there, not too much. We've got a few tanks, the Scorpion tanks, that's the GLA's standard tank. 
and that's their standard infantry, the rebels. I'll build one more Paladin tank. Now, if you're new to Command and Conquer games, you'll notice that all of this here is blacked out. You can't see what's over here. So it's only until you move a unit in this area that it will become revealed. Okay, that's called the Fog of War. So you have to reveal that by moving your units into it. You can use certain abilities to see what's in the Fog of War, like here, for example. If you click on your command center, the USA have this awesome ability, the spy satellite. Look, it reveals target area, spots hidden units. This is a great ability to have. If you left click and then let's right click here, actually let's right click here, and left click here in the Fog of War, look, you can see what's there. Only for a limited amount of time. And then you have to wait another 1 minute and 30 seconds before you can use it again. How long does this stay up actually? Let's test this. Shouldn't be long, it's normally just... Yeah, it's starting to... Go back now to the Fog of War. Okay. A few enemy tanks there. No problem, we'll take care of them. Now, there is one more thing I want to mention. Like I said earlier on, if you left click on one of your units, one of your vehicles or tanks, whatever, it will come up with a bit of information down here. So if I click on the ranges, they can capture buildings. That's one of their unique abilities. The Humvees, pretty much every single USA vehicle, whether it be a tank or light vehicle, can build either a battle drone or a scout drone attached to it all right you can only have one drone per vehicle so be that a battle drone or a scout drone i prefer the battle drones the battle drones cost a bit more but as you can see it fires a small machine gun and repairs its parent vehicle very very handy that repair ability and the battle drone actually shoots at enemy units too which is pretty good if you choose to build a scout drone. Actually, let's just build a battle drone first. I'll show you what it looks like. There you can see it's building. And done. There it is. It's coming out. Let's just zoom in by using the middle mouse scroll button. So it just flies around the vehicle that you built it for. If the vehicle takes damage, the drone will repair it. And it also fires, like I said, at enemy units that come in close contact with it. And as you can see, these are greyed out now. This upgrade has already been purchased because, like I said, you can only build either a battle drone or a scout drone. You can't have more than one per vehicle. So, with this Humvee, let's build a battle drone and you'll see it beginning to repair it since this one is damaged. Watch. See, it comes up with the little wrench icon indicating that the drone is repairing that vehicle. Now, with the Scout Drone, let's build one of them. Extends sight range and reveals hidden enemies. So certain units in this game are camouflaged and you can't see them by normal means. You need to build certain units or use certain abilities of certain units that can detect hidden slash camouflaged enemy units. So this scout drone is really good for spotting enemy hidden enemy units like and it also extends the range at which you can see like look how far away we are and if I just move forward a Let's bit this will it. become revealed watch see it's because the scout Break drone also increases the uh, sight range of whatever vehicle you have it for yeah, so it's talking about it here. Look, some units have special abilities. Select a unit to see what special powers it has. Left click on the power to activate it. In the case of the USA Crusader tank, each tank can build a single battle drone. Battle drones are small robotic helpers that automatically engage enemies and repair their Crusader tank in case it is damaged by enemy fire. 
not just the Crusader tanks, Paladin tanks as well, and Humvees, pretty much any of your vehicles. You can only do this with the USA faction. The Chinese and GLA do not have drones. Now, instead of just clicking on each individual one of your vehicles and tanks and building the drone, you know, going to the next one, click, click, okay, there's the tank, click, let's build the drone. What you can do is click on, say, the Paladin tank, for example, and press E on your keyboard. As you can see, it selects all the Paladin tanks on screen. If we move this Paladin tank, and then basically once you've done that, you can just build... I'll show you. It'll build a battle drone for every Paladin tank. Watch. See? They all come up. Crusader now if I just move this Crusader Within. tank up Polished here, off screen... Taking her in. I know this is quite an in-depth tutorial I'm making here, guys, but it's really important what I'm explaining in terms of how to play this game. You need to know this shit, otherwise you'll have no chance on the higher difficulties. You'll be able to get through normal, but hard and brutal, you need to know this stuff. Okay, so let's do the same for the Crusader tanks. Armor detail reporting. Click on it and press E, and they're all selected. Look, top left, selected across screen. However, this Crusader tank up here is not selected. So, if you want to select that one as well, all Heavy Crusader tanks across the whole map, the whole screen, everywhere, Left click on a Crusader tank, and instead of pressing E once, press it twice in rapid succession. There you go. Selected across the map. So these ones are all selected, and there you go. So is that one. Now let's click on the battle drone to build a battle drone for all Clearing Crusader terrain. tanks. Let's do the same for the Humvees. We'll build battle drones for them too. And I'd say we are pretty good to go. Let's group them all to group one and put them all in formation like so. And we are good to go, guys. Let's go over here and rescue these USA pilots. Oh yeah. We've got a nice army here. You have freed several pilots. USA pilots are often veterans of many battles and they can enter your vehicles to provide their skills and experience to the crew of the vehicle. Vehicles with golden chevrons near them have experienced crews and are more effective in combat. So, where do you need me? <laughs> where do you need me? I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Whoops, I've blocked them in with my tanks. How about a show of force? Get out. You're blocking them. Get out of the way. Okay. Let's move all the pilots over here. Pilots, uh, they don't have any weapons. They can't. I'm on my way. They can't shoot enemy units. They can't do anything. They basically just run around unarmed, and they I'm will get absolutely wrecked. But the pilots are great because what you can do is, as you can see above them. They have these golden chevrons, okay? They've only got one, sometimes they'll have two, sometimes three. Now, and you can also see that this Humvee, Humvee has a here. chevron above it. Basically, what the chevrons do is, you can... Pilot of the USA. Let me just put a pilot in this Humvee Should and another walking. one in. It basically increases the rank of the vehicle. So when you put a pilot into a vehicle, any vehicle, tank, Humvee, whatever, any experience that, that pilot has, whatever chevrons, however many chevrons that pilot has, is however many will be added to the vehicle you put him in. So I just put two pilots with one chevron each into this Humvee, and that boosted it up by another two chevrons. When you see a vehicle with three chevrons, it has basically reached the max. You can't go any higher than three chevrons. What do the chevrons mean? Well, basically, if a vehicle or unit, infantry, whatever, has one chevron, it basically means they will fight more effective in combat. They'll fire a lot faster. You know, they'll be a lot more effective in battle. If you see a vehicle or infantry, whatever, with two chevrons, they will gain the ability to self-heal. 
as well as become more effective in combat. And if they have three chevrons, they will, of course, once again gain the ability to heal and I believe they're even more effective in combat. They fire a lot faster and so on. So, if you can get your units having two chevrons or more, they will self-heal and it's fantastic because you can, for example, fight a battle like we're going to go over here soon and destroy this stinger site. Obviously the stingers are going to damage some of my tanks and they'll get a bit hurt. But if they've got two chevrons or more, then I can just, after the battle, I can just move them over here, have a bit of a rest until they fully heal to full health and then go into the next battle. So it's really, really good. Pilots are very handy like that. Find me a vehicle. So I'm going to Anything put to all three of these pilots into now this Paladin talking. tank. Give it the full three chevrons. There you go. So that Paladin is tank is now an absolute beast. It's ready to go. So pilots are very handy. Um, they sometimes, they don't only eject from aircraft, but they sometimes eject from vehicles as well. You can't build them. You can't build pilots. They're only sort of just, they're like, in some of the missions, you'll just find them like this. You know, you'll have to rescue them. They're sort of a luxury. You know, you don't really need them, but they certainly do help out in Ready battle. For action. Okay, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to talk about. Have I? Wow, I've chewed up everything at that supply stash. There's no money left. No more supply stashes? No, okay. Well, I'd say we're good to go now. And destroy the enemy's base. Let me just make sure they're all grouped. And information. Breaking Let's loose. do this. Let's destroy this Stinger site. Stinger sites are really annoying. It's a base defense the GLA can build, and as you can see, fires off these missiles. Stinger sites are great for anti air defense as well. They will destroy your aircraft in seconds. That was handy. We got some support from some Comanche helicopters there. How okay. About How about a lift? Whoa! Let's use an attack move to go over Let's here go and destroy everything in our path on our way there. <laughs> it's running off. It saw the all these vehicles coming city. across the bridge. Drop zone designated Alpha Zero Five. on the way. Civilian buildings can be occupied by soldiers. Order your soldiers to enter civilian buildings to get a defensive bonus. Civilian buildings occupied in this way are powerful strong points for your troops and can be used to defend important routes into and out of your base. So we're going to get a paratrooper drop here. Oh, cool! We've got the missile. I believe these guys are the missile defenders, yes, and they're going to occupy these buildings. And watch, they start firing from the buildings. If you've got units in buildings, it is so good. Fantastic defense. It takes quite a while for enemy units to destroy Unit the buildings. Lost. And your units inside will continually fire at the enemy as they're trying to destroy it. Fantastic way of defending your base or defending choke points into your base oh look so you can see the see the paladin tank shooting out that laser watch Polished let me just ready. move a bit closer watch the stinger sight shoot out a Closing missile at the tank come yes, on shoot Taking her in. watch see Enemy technicals on the move. Lost. see how it shoots out a red laser Yes. Awesome. If you have a bunch of these Paladin tanks, basically these Stinger sites are rendered useless. They can't do shit Unit lost. because your Paladin tanks will just constantly destroy the missiles that they fire out. And they're also good against RPG troopers as well. Like a good run. 
Okay, so if you want to evacuate all your troops from the building, just click on the building and either select an individual troop or just go evacuate to order them all to come out. So this guy here anything. is pretty much the missile defender. He's great for destroying sure enemy tanks and enemy aircraft. The thing is the other factions don't have that much aircraft. China only has MiG fighters and the GLA don't even have aircraft. So as the USA you don't really need much anti-air if any anti-air defense. It's predominantly when you play as the GLA that you need anti-air defense such as the Stinger sights and RPG troopers which they don't have any of at the moment. They have some stinger sights though. But yeah, you'll see more and more of that as I play through the main missions. Okay, let's evacuate all these troops. Special Might as well just get here. everyone to group up. And I will just overwhelm the base. So I'm going to press Got 1 now. Way. Now you can see how these troops aren't part of the group. If you want to add units to the group, hold shift, left shift click and drag and that will add the extra units there to the group press control 1 and there you go control F to put them in formation if you want to get rid of a unit in a group hold shift and left click on that unit there you go and press control 1 again okay and now that unit is not part of the group but we do want him to be part of the group, so let's hold shift. Special forces let's click him. here. Control one. There you go. Search and destroy. Now these buildings here, if you capture them, let's the because vehicle. I've gained the capture Unit building lost. upgrade from the barracks. Basically, your rangers Army's can capture we'll buildings now. And as you can see, it's an oil derrick capture to receive additional funds. Need a point, man. Now I'll just capture this first one here, and I'll show you what it does. These basically boost your income. Once you capture it, you'll get $1,000 as a bonus immediately. So watch. 22,775. And not only that, every roughly... 25 seconds you'll get another two hundred dollars from this oil Always derrick prepared. so if you see an oil derrick in the main campaign missions go ahead and try and capture it because that will allow you to build more units more base defenses whatever you want all right i don't really need to do this now all i need to do is just move all my units in here and overwhelm this base which i'll be able to do the enemy base here has stinger sights, so we need to be careful of them. They've got two, but there's some barrels there which I can shoot and it should blow up the whole thing. And the GLA also has these defenses, tunnel networks. I'll get into that once I play as the GLA, but you need to be careful of these buildings because they've got like this machine gun turret on top, and when you get close it will fire it. It really chews up your infantry. It's a very good anti-infantry defense, but in terms of vehicles, you know, this tunnel network machine gun here is useless against vehicles, mainly tanks. It's okay, I guess, against weak vehicles like Humvees, but against tanks, doesn't stand a chance. Alright, let's do this. I'm going to do an attack move command. You don't have to keep clicking this and doing that. If you want, you can just press A on the keyboard. That's a little shortcut. So here we go, I've just done an attack. On the enemy base. Move All command for into contact. the enemy base. And Fire watch well. this. Watch the destruction unfold. Enemy Actually, I should destroy these stinger sites the first. Shoot the damn barrels, enemy there we go. Airborne. Okay, Airborne. just do an attack Airborne. move up there. The blood tanks should use their red lasers to destroy the missiles from the stinger sites finish off destroying their base defenses the thing is in this game if you destroy a building like I'll show you here I'll destroy 
their supply stash, which is where they gain their money from. So, watch, okay? I haven't destroyed it fully. See how... Okay, now I have. Basically, you have to... De it's hard to explain, but... You have to destroy enemy buildings and base defenses twice, almost. Okay? So if I go over here and start shooting at their barracks, you watch. Okay, the health is slowly going down. Bang, it's destroyed, but technically it's not. If you stop, this will actually heal automatically and it will become rebuilt. So you have to make sure you really finish it off twice. And there we go. That was too easy. <laughs> Way too easy. General, our oh wow, look at all my troops, they're dying. Full battlefield command. Yeah, the GLA uses biological warfare. That's one of their strengths. Anthrax. So you need to be careful of stuff like that. It'll really, really mess up your troops. And vehicles as well, tanks too, but mostly your troops will get absolutely decimated with that sort of stuff. The bioweapons. Okay, so that's it guys. That's my intro plus training mission video. I know it probably went on for quite a while, but I think I've pretty much said all the things I want to talk about in regards to how to play this game. I'm sure if I've left out anything, I'll talk about it as I go through the main missions. And of course, once we go through the missions, we're going to be getting new infantry units, new vehicles, new tanks, and so on. So I will talk about each of those units, their strengths, their weaknesses, as we play on. But that's it for now, guys. I hope you've enjoyed that video. I'm going to jump straight into the USA's main missions after this, followed by China's and then the GLA's. So, until then, I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.